Did you see the way your daughter smiled at you? It was like she already knows you're her mother. Oh, <laughs> well, of course she does. Mm -hmm. What'd you say you named her again? Endora. Really? <laughs> so you named her after the witch on that old TV show they rerun in the middle of the night? Absolutely not. Just so happens that one of my very best friends was called Endora. One of the meanest hags ever to fly a broom. <laughs> Imagine naming my little darling after some pseudo television stereotype. <laughs> anyway, no self respecting member of the dark side would ever allow their child to marry a mere mortal. So I guess you think I'm an idiot too then, for loving Miguel as much as I do. If the cloven hoof fits. Well, I don't care. I am resigning from the dark side. I have to if my baby's gonna have a chance at survival. Resign? You can't resign from our line of work, Kay. It's not a nine-to-five job you can just quit. No, I am, Tabitha. Dr. Russell's not even sure my little girl's gonna survive. Now, I may not have confessed all of my sins to Father Lonigan, but I did make a start at turning my life around. I've got to be good, Tabitha, for my daughter's sake. Are you certain you want to go through with this? Saving the baby means you will lose Miguel. I love Miguel with all of my heart. But I'm going to save this baby no matter what the cost to me. So let's hurry before it's too late. Oh! Dear God, it is too late. The baby's dead. Charity. I'm glad you're here. I was just gonna call you. Ah, uh, well, I wanted to bring Kay some flowers, but I, I couldn't resist a peek at the baby. She's beautiful, isn't she? Mm. I stayed with her, and she seemed like she had a really good night. I know that I'm not supposed to get my hopes up, but I'm telling you, Charity, I, I have to. You know, I love her so much already. I, I can't imagine how I'd go on living if she died. You don't need to worry about that, Miguel. I've made sure she's going to live. Sorry, I didn't realize anyone would be up this early. I'm just gonna throw some clothes no, on. No, it's hey, there's no um, reason to do that. I mean, we're all roommates now. There's no need to be so modest and uptight, right? Yeah, I guess you're right. I just didn't realize anyone would be up. Hey, nice haircut. Wow. Oh, thanks. <laughs> handsome. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm an early riser, so I just I woke up and I went to the hair salon, got my hair done, and then uh, took my morning run. And I was actually about ready to hit the shower after I finished my drink. Um, do you want some? Well, what is it? Actually, I call this um, <clears throat> my Super Duper Box Special Fruit Blendo. It's a healthier way to kick off the day than caffeine, so uh, you want to try it? Well, if you got enough. I got enough. Come on, girl. Okay. Fruit smoothies? And a new hairdo. Fox, you have gone L.A. already. Yeah, well, you know, when in Rome. Oh, thank you. One hell of a night last night, huh? <laughs> Say that again. Yeah, I mean, I can't even get over the fact that Ethan just wound up in Teresa's bed last night, and they were kissing, and, you know, if we hadn't have walked in there and woke them up when we yeah, did, Yeah, I know, we, uh, I know. You know what? You're going to think I've totally gone L.A. here, but uh, if you ask me, I think subconsciously they both knew exactly what they were doing. 
Is, is Teresa up yet? I don't know. I mean, if she is, I haven't seen her. You know what? Come to think of it, I haven't seen Ethan this morning either. Huh. against mine, I, I cannot deny it anymore. You are the woman I love, and you're the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. You do not know how long I have waited to hear those words. I love you so much. It was so hard to leave that hospital last night. Your little niece, she's so fragile and tiny. She may be fragile, but she is a Lopez Fitzgerald. I'm sure she's a fighter. Yeah, Eve said it was a good sign that she had made it this far. Hey, she's gonna make it, all right? Don't worry. Eat. Yeah. Any news on Sheridan? No. Uh, I was on the computer all morning trying to pinpoint her exact location in Paris. Hmm. If she still is in Paris. I'm glad she's safe and sound. It's just... I wish I could talk to her, just make sure she's doing what she really wants. ruined everything last night. Luis was this close to seeing you last night. Maybe it's a good thing that it happened. Because it showed me that I just can't be as easy on you as I have been so far. And then... Once you give birth to the baby that I'm going to pass off as my own, you're as good as dead. I would hold the hand of the one who could leave my places And kiss the lips of the one who could sing so sweet Could you have any control over my baby being all right? Oh, I, I get it. You've been praying for a recovery. That's right, Miguel. I prayed, and I bargained, and I know that God will protect her. What do you mean you bargained? Charity. Oh, hi, hi. hi. Miguel. Hey, Mrs. Smith. You know, uh, something told me when you weren't in your room this morning that she'd be here. Miguel, how's the baby? Uh, they, they say that it's still touch and go, but she's hanging in there. Charity seems pretty sure that she'll be okay. I think so, too. You know, you two have been through so much lately. It's really nice to see you just stealing a moment to be together. Yeah, well, I wanted to thank you, Mrs. Bennett. You know, for being so sensitive to this whole situation. 
Dr. Russell seems to think that if Kay finds out that Charity and I are still together, she could have a relapse with her blood pressure. Well, I, you know, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you going along with this whole thing, just for my daughter's health. You know, I know this is hard to believe right now, but I think that Kay will come to recognize that you can be in love with Charity and still be a good father to her baby. I hope so. You know, I never wanted to hurt Kay, never. You know, but my heart's with Charity. We're together, and, and we're gonna stay that way. Tabitha, you're the one who told me that you didn't have the power to save my baby, that I had to ask God. Hey, hey, watch your language, young lady. Whatever. It worked. That's why my baby's still alive, because I'm trying to be good. Okay, can't be that naive. But let's use the brains we were born with, shall we? There is no one alive held in less favor by that one than me. And you've seen my baby? She's the picture of perfect health. Well, that doesn't mean anything. You wouldn't remember, but there was, a, there was an actress by the name of Mae West, and she once said, goodness has nothing to do with it. <laughs> In other words, even if your baby survived, and nothing would make me happier for both of you if she did, it would have absolutely nothing to do with your pitiful pleas to... The one I can't mention. Well, then why did you tell me to pray when my baby was dying? I, I just wanted to make you feel better, dear. Good grief, Kay. You, you can't believe everything I say. You'll never get anywhere in this world. The sad truth is that your baby's survival is a total crapshoot. How dare you? I, I'm... I'm just telling it like it is, dear. You could turn into a saint on this earth, or an angel like my Timmy, and it wouldn't make the blindest bit of difference. You'd still lose your baby and Miguel. No. I can't. I've suffered too much already. You know, sometimes I just wish I could turn back the clock. I need to feel loved. Loved? Loved by whom? May I remind you that your mother is a far cry from Auntie M. It would be a miracle if she ever really cared for you again after all the things you've said to her. Well, everyone says things that they don't mean when they're angry. Oh, uh, what about slapping her across the face on more than one occasion, I might add? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. The rift between you two has, has widened thanks to your words and actions. Any compassion your mother feels is for charity, not you. She wants charity to marry Miguel. Well, that is not going to happen. Miguel promised me that he was going to be with me and our baby. So if I go home and I mend my ways, I'm sure that that will work out. It's your choice, Kay, but I'm telling you, home, as you remember it, is gone, if it ever existed. Oh, just give it up. When did you learn how to make such a good omelet, Miho? When I realized Sheridan couldn't cook a lick. <laughs> She's still very much on your mind, huh? Every second of every day. That's just that she's so far away and she's gonna have my baby. Or your brother's. Well, I believe it's mine. Not that it matters anyway. I'll still raise him or her as if it were my own. If that's what Sheridan wants. You know, I think... Sheridan felt so much pressure between you and Antonio. She did the only thing that she can think to do, and that is to go away and sort out all this confusion. And it's not that I blame her. I just don't understand why she's doing it. 
Or what if something goes wrong during her pregnancy and I'm not there to help her? I just find it hard to believe that she doesn't want me there when the baby's born. Hey, precious! <laughs> Thanks for the tea. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Could use a little sugar, though. And we all know where that went. <laughs> well, what, what are you doing? You used up all the sugar in the house for your pretend baby. Now I want some for my real tea. Tough. I'll get you some later. I need every granule I can get my hands on if I'm going to continue to fool Luis. Oh, you really think you're going to pull off this old switcheroo with Sheridan's baby when she delivers it, huh? <laughs> what about Luis, huh? Hmm? He's already making noises about wanting to be with you round the clock until your bun is out of the oven. Well, guess what? There is no bun, so sooner or later... He's going to realize that you lied. He's going to figure out why and that you are behind Sheridan's disappearance. And then you know what's going to happen? Your whole stinky, wacko plan is going to blow up right in your face. And then you are going to be spending the rest of your life in jail, knowing that what I think about you is right, that you are a stupid loser. Right, Precious? Let me guess who it was about. Let me guess. Was it someone whose name began with a vowel, maybe? Uh -huh. Uh-huh. You can stop making fun of me, Whitney. Everything in my life points to the same conclusion. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with Ethan. Thank you. And it may be sooner rather than later. Teresa, come on. Okay, lecture me all you want, Whitney. But I know what I know. Ethan is here in L.A. At the same time I am... And, and last night, he climbed into my bed, and we almost made love. All right? Now, you tell me what the odds are of that happening if we're not destined to spend the rest of our lives together. Oh, believe me, you, you don't want to hear my take on this. Because, honey, there's, there's nothing that you can say. Well, how about when's pregnant, and you're out of your ever-loving mind if you think Ethan's going to forget about that? All right, I don't, I don't know about that part, okay? But what I do know is that Ethan and I are soulmates who can't be kept apart. How can you, of all people, argue about the power of true love? Unless you're taking Gwen's side because you're nervous about your own relationship? Whoa. Where'd that come from? Well, is that it? I mean, are you afraid that something or someone's gonna come between you and Chad? Yeah, Vivian is Fox. Thought I guess I'd be hearing from you this morning. Hey, listen, um, I'm wondering, is Sid gonna be at that production thing that you guys have going on today? Absolutely. Chad's producing her first single, and as far as I'm concerned, those two are going to be joined at the hip till it's on the shelves in stores. Music to my ears. The more reasons you can find to keep those two together, the more your bank account's gonna thank you. I appreciate that. Just one question. What's in this for you? Now, who said there was anything in it for me? <laughs> I know you, Fox. This is about a woman, isn't it? All right, I'll talk to you later, Vivian. Thanks for the help. It's not just any woman. I want to spend the rest of my life with Whitney. want to go back to your creepy house and those freaks in the basement. 
We speak very highly of you, dear. <sighs> Look, Kay, I'm not crazy about the idea of you coming with your kid as house guests, but seems to me you don't have a hell of a lot of choices. And if you want to get Miguel back, you're going to have to crash with me. Because if you go home, you're going to end up shopping for wedding dresses for charity. Maybe it'll be different this time. Uh, yeah, and maybe the sun will rise in the west tomorrow. I don't think so. If you want to get Miguel back, you're going to have to stick with me and use your newborn to seal the deal. Miguel already promised uh, that he... Okay, uh, have you heard a single word I've said? When has Miguel ever been able to keep his distance from that boring, beatific blonde? I mean, even last night, when he was swearing up and down that he'd stick by you, you saw them hugging. I mean, th that's why you stopped your confession to Father Lonigan, wasn't it? <laughs> Jeff, you need any more proof? Take a gander out there. Yeah. Need I say more, dear? You think I'm worried that someone will come between Chad and me? No, 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 no. Of course not. That, that's that's not what I meant. I'm just saying that I'm, I'm surprised that you don't believe in the power of true love as much as I do. Well, you can't compare Chad and me to you and Ethan. I mean, you're in love with a man who's married to someone else with a baby on the way. But Ethan is only married to Gwen because. There's a baby on the way. Honey, in case you've forgotten, Ethan was about to propose to me before Gwen dropped that big bombshell. But that doesn't mean Ethan's not going to honor his commitment he made to her. There's a big difference between commitment and passion, all right? And I'm not saying that Ethan doesn't love Gwen, because he does. I know he does in his own way. But it's just, it's not in the same league as what Ethan and I share. You know, our love... It's deeper, it's stronger than anything he and Gwen could ever have. And Ethan knows about this. Well, he's not a hundred percent aware of it, but yeah, yeah, he senses it. And one day the truth is gonna hit him right between the eyes. And when it does, there's no commitment in the world that will be able to keep us apart. Okay, it's a miracle you've been able to pass off that bag of sugar as Luis's baby for as long as you have. It's not a miracle, Mother. It is a stroke of genius that's going to keep working as long as it has to. Okay. So, what happens if Luis gets worried when he doesn't feel the baby move? Uh-oh. <laughs> and then, what happens when he wants to go to the doctor's office with you? Uh-oh. He won't. Okay, he is way too upset about the idea of Sheridan being in Paris. So, by the time he starts asking too many questions, she'll have given birth. I'll have a real baby in my arms to distract him with. Missy! Precious and I just saved your bacon last night with that old wives' concoction to stop Sheridan's contraction. Hey! Have you figured out what you're gonna do when she goes into labor again? Charlie will help me, Mother. Charlie didn't deliver babies in the hospital. She emptied bedpans. Precious could do a better job of bringing Sheridan's kid into the world. Yeah. You know what? That is really funny. You know, the only patient that I would let Precious take care of is you. And, and, and for the record, I have been online all morning researching home births, um, midwifery. Oh, brother. Oh, yeah, and look, 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 I have a whole list. I mean, everything that we need to deliver Sheridan's baby without incident. I, I'm ready, Mother. Nothing is going to stop me from having a life with Louise. Nothing. I don't even know how long I've been down here. Oh, baby. Sorry, I got us into this. As God is my witness, though, I will get us out of here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. My baby. 
My baby's not moving. Help! You are my passion for life. So, you think this girl you're producing has what it takes? I mean, if Sid Valentine doesn't go platinum by next year, it's my fault, not hers. I mean, this girl has the style, the voice, the looks. I couldn't ask for a more promising young singer my first time out. Except for Whitney, of course. <laughs> I mean, that's my dream. Well, it's, it'll happen then. Two of you deserve it. Thanks. You know, sometimes I get scared by how good my life is going. Between my career and looking forward to a future with Whitney. I mean, how did a punk like me get so lucky? <laughs> Chad, luck's got nothing to do with it. You know, you, you worked hard. You didn't give up. You and Whitney, you've earned all the happiness coming to you. I appreciate that, man. Now, how about you? What about me? Uh, you and Teresa, I mean, you guys fought like hell to get back together. Uh, you had made up your mind to marry her when Gwen got pregnant. Now, I'm not saying you didn't do the right thing. But remember, I know where your heart really was. And, and maybe still is. Chad, if, if you're talking about that, that misunderstanding with Teresa that, the other that, night... That is some misunderstanding. I mean, you were in her bed, kissing her like there's no tomorrow. We were sound asleep. Okay, well, I can't help but think that deep down inside, part of both of you was wide awake. And if you can't admit that to yourself, I, I could feel why. But if I'm right, it's not going to just go away. Now, love doesn't work like that, and you know it. Mm -hmm. You know, call me crazy. I just don't want to see you get hurt again. Oh, honey, I won't. And you know why? Because deep down, where it really counts in a person, Ethan wants to be with me as much as I want to be with him. And it's going to happen only a matter of time. You know, fate is going to bring us together. So what do you say we have Teresa put a dollar in a box every time she says the word fate? Oh, then we'd all be as rich as you, Fox. <laughs> Hey, that's a great haircut there. Mm -hmm. All right, seriously, you know what? Enough about my hair, all right? Um, <laughs> anyway, I brought you one of my super-duper Fox fruit blendos, but no, wait, I can see that I've interrupted yet another one of your impassioned speeches about my half-brother, so I'll just come back. No, so. stay. There are no secrets where Ethan is concerned. Right. Right, because it's all up to the, uh, to the love gods that you're just certain are smiling down upon you, too. Yeah, go ahead, mock me, but I told you both that fate was going to bring us back together. Give me a dollar. <laughs> oh, uh, I owe ya. All right, I want it back. Okay. You know what? I was thinking you'd have a little more faith in destiny because it will bring you and the woman you love together. Who are you calling, Louise? Sheridan. But calling her cell phone on the off chance that she'll pick up one of these times. But you don't even know if she has her phone with her. Oh, well, I didn't find it in her room, so maybe she does. You know, you're lucky, Mother, that I haven't stuck you down in that pit with Sheridan. Well, aren't you a nasty piece of work? How did you ever turn out so badly, huh? Oh, God. Yeah, well, maybe I should tell you. Wait a minute. That's not our phone. No, it's Sheridan's cell phone. Surprise. It's Luis. He calls her at least once a day to leave a message. It's me again, Sheridan. I got the DVD you sent from Paris. I know you meant it to reassure me, but um, I, I just wish that you'd call me so that, that we could talk. I miss you so much, and uh, well, I love you more than I could say. But um, can, you, can you just get in touch with me when you get this? Did you hear that, Missy? All he can think about is her. So you can grow your pointy hair, you can bleach it blonde, you can even pass off her baby as your own. Luis will never, ever love you the way he loves her. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. So, how are you feeling this morning? Fine. 
You sure? I wouldn't have said it if I weren't. I brought you some flowers. Here you go. Thanks. Sure. I just came from the baby, Kay. And uh, the nurse said she had a really good night. Yeah, that's what they told me, too. I just really wish that they'd, <clears throat> that they'd let me stay and make you with her. Or let her stay in here with me. Well, there's a reason why they won't allow it. You know, they want you to rest and get well so that you can take care of the baby when she's released. I promise, I'm with her practically around the clock. He even had Reese picking up his course schedule from the university so he could be here all day. I can drop off your paperwork at the registrar when I go drop off mine. Okay. And I can drop off yours too, Kay. Yeah, sweetheart, you know, I haven't even seen your course schedule for next semester. I don't have one. I'm not going to school anymore. Uh, since when? Since I dropped out for good. Now give me that, because I want to hear too. <laughs> If you don't want me to come to Europe for the birth, I understand that. I just, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a call when you get this. You're not only a loser, you're a fool to boot. There is no way this guy is gonna stop loving Sheridan. So everything, everything you have done has been for nothing. Do you hear me? N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Let's just see who gets the last laugh, Mother. Oh. When Sharon is dead and Louise and I are raising her baby, he is never going to see her again. Never. You... You never told me that you were thinking of leaving college. Well, I don't tell you a lot of things. We don't live under the same roof. Well, that's just not an excuse for not consulting with me and your father about such a big decision. So what exactly are you going to do if you don't go to school? I have a baby now, remember? Yes, a baby who's going to need a mother with a college education. I mean, Kay, how are you going to provide for her down the road if you can only get a minimum wage job? Excuse me, but how was I supposed to register for classes when I don't have a dime to my oh, name? Come on, Kay. You know your father and I would have paid for your tuition. I can't believe you didn't come to us. Maybe I would have if you hadn't kicked me out when I got oh, pregnant. You know that is not... Is it too late for Kay to still register for class? Yeah, I'm afraid so. How could you be so irresponsible? Who's going to provide for you and the baby? What? Why are you so quiet, Whitney? Don't you believe in fate? Well, yeah, mm. sure. I mean, sometimes. But I certainly don't think it's the reason that Ethan is out here in Los Angeles at the same time as Teresa. How much more proof do you need? OK, uh, come on, come on, listen, all right? I imagined, imagined Ethan being here, OK? And then the next thing I knew, he was here. He was in that bed, and we were kissing, Whitney. Now, now, if that's not meant to be, I don't know what is. You know what? You two are going to have to work this out on your own, because uh, i got to go get dressed, OK? Hey, I hate to go, but I don't want to be late to the studio. Wow, baby. Look how handsome you look. I'm my just... big shot music producer. <laughs> I hope my bosses think so. Oh, gosh, they will. Are you kidding? You're going to knock them dead. <laughs> you know what? You and me are going to finish this conversation a little bit later. But I'm going to walk my big, sexy man to the door. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I'm going to go take a shower. <laughs> oh, What in the world did Whitney forget now? Hmm? You know, I have to knock. It, uh... Uh. Do 
You know how I light a candle every night for your father? Still hoping he'll come home. It worked for Antonio, did it not? All right, so I'll light a candle for Sheridan, too, then. Come on. Why, if people, if people only knew what a real monster you have turned into. But they won't know, Mother, and you are not going to tell them. And neither is Precious. Sheridan dies as soon as I take possession of her infant. Luis will be none the wiser. In fact, Luis will start to resent Sheridan for running out on him. And then over time, his love for Sheridan will fade and be replaced by the love he feels for the mother of his child. Bethy, you are not the mother. He won't know that. No more losing out on my dreams, mother. I'm going to do whatever I have to in order to win. Baby, please, please, just give me a kick, a twinge, something, something, so I know that you're all right. Please. Oh, no. No, my, my ankles. Oh, no, they're so swollen. Oh, it must have been that horrid stuff that idiot gave me with the stomach like contractions. Oh, no, I really need a doctor. Please, Louie, please, please, you have to find us. Before my baby dies, we are running out of time. Come on, please. Ever oh. been set up by a good friend and you wonder? Good. From the creator of Sex in the City, Alicia Silverstone is Miss Match. Fridays this fall on NBC.